Bricks and Minifigs is your one-stop shop for all things LEGO. Hit the link below to find a store near you. Hi, I'm Nick Jensen, aka Nick Brick, and I am leading this Orphan Log collab as a tribute to Christopher Nolan. And in this collab we have something from every single one of his uh, films, through, uh, from his first film and following in 1999, all the way through Oppenheimer in 2023. So, Fantastic, there's a lot here. <laughs> so to start, we have a clapboard with all their collaborators signing on there as if they are part of like a, a cast or crew. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it actually works. <laughs> so now we're ready to roll. <laughs> uh, from, from the beginning here, we have uh, Christopher Nolan's first film, which was Following. Following was from 1999. It was shot in black and white and is about this character who follows other people and ends up following someone that you really shouldn't have. Uh, because it is in black and white, I built some uh, props from the film in black and white, and you can see it. Uh, you can see on like the hammer here, the wood grip is a uh, grayscale of two tones, the old and new gray to show the wood grain going across there. I also, love that. It's very subtle, but when you start looking at it, it's really cool. <laughs> it's really hard to see because those two grays are very close to each other, but if you notice it, you notice it. Mm -hmm. As well as a rubber glove that's a, a little bit of a part of the movie that I don't want to spoil. Um, even though, yeah, it's a 25-year-old <laughs> movie. I'm, I'm going to try to be spoiler-free as much as possible, but uh, just in case, uh, maybe watch the movies first. <laughs> Come back after you've sat and watched every Christopher Nolan movie and then finish this video. <laughs> uh, from here, we can go to Memento, uh, his 2000 movie about this, uh, this character who is trying to avenge uh, the death of his wife. And uh, he has a, a bit of a memory problem. He needs to uh, take photos with his Polaroid camera. He has tattoos on his body so he can remember key details about this murder he's trying to solve even though he can't remember anything and uh, for this one I built a Polaroid of one of their foldable cameras with a uh, uh, the only feature on it is uh, a viewfinder you can look, uh, look through straight through mm -hmm. and one of the details on there that you can point out is uh, there's the Polaroid uh, printed tile from uh, I think it's the Polaroid SX70 yeah. camera set that one was on the film pack and I was able to use it on this replica because it's almost perfectly a scale with it. Mm -hmm. In addition to the Polaroid camera, I actually built some scenes from the movie that, uh, that Leonard shoots throughout. And uh, one of them is his, uh, his friend Teddy, but on the back it says, don't believe his lies. And uh, a picture of the sign to the inn where he stays early in the movie. Those were shot on my phone, cast to a TV, and I shot it with a Polaroid camera from there. <laughs> Otherwise, those shots would not be in focus. They're too small. <laughs> After Memento, we can move on to Insomnia, which, fun fact, is the only movie that Christopher Nolan directed that he did not write. It was a remake of a movie of the same name. So from Insomnia, we have this build from Adam Myers, who built a Smith & Wesson Model 10. This was a revolver that uh, one of the main characters, it's his service pistol, but uh, he is unfortunately shot by his partner and that's a key part of the movie. So you have that as well as uh, the motif of this uh, bloodstained uh, blanket that is carried around in. Great use of the, the barrel pieces there uh, as part of the gun. That's very nice. It's very inspirational. If you look closely at the uh, cylinder, you can see some bullets on the inside. Yes. Almost looks like it's loaded, but I mean, it's Lego. It doesn't actually shoot, but it is a fabulous replica. And you can see that it was nominated for Best Replica here at Brickwell Chicago. And then what's up next here? Next, we grouped all of his Batman movies together. We have the Dark Knight trilogy, which will include Batman Begins, The Dark Knight, and The Dark Knight Rises. The first item that we have here is uh, from the opening scene of The Dark Knight where the Joker and his henchmen uh, conduct a bank heist, a very convoluted one, but uh, <laughs> it's a great character reveal. And this right here is the mask that the Joker himself wears, that Heath Ledger's Joker wears to do 
the robbery, he removes the mask and reveals himself as a Joker to, uh, uh, to the mob bank's uh, main guy. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the movie gets insane from there. <laughs> In addition to that, I have some more Joker and uh, Two-Face props. So we have Two-Face's coin that on the back is damaged so that he leaves everybody's life up to luck. We have the Joker's playing card with the flaming sword and all that. This is from the scene where he's in like the this hideout and he decides that we need to kill the Batman, but you never work for free. He wants half. Mm-hmm. When they want to take things more seriously, Give him a call. Here's his card. (laughs) Also, he performs a little magic trick with this pencil. I'm sure anybody that's seen the movie remembers that scene in particular. Uh, Also from The Dark Knight, we have from Daniel Church, the detonator for the bomb that goes on the two different different ferries that are in the bay. Now that that scene, there were criminals on one boat and uh, uh, civilians on the other boat, and they each have a detonator for the other boat. And they have, they're part of a social experiment whether they're going to blow up the other boat or not. But if neither of them do it by a certain time, Joker will blow them both up. But this is like a really tense scene where the Batman tries to be the hero and save both in his own way. And uh, yeah, it's a really great prop to add to this whole layout. It brings everything together. Uh, from here, we can. Uh, we can talk with Bryce, who made some replicas from, I believe, uh, The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, so if you want to introduce yourself and then let us know what you got here. Sure thing. So my name is Bryce. I'm known online as Brickbolt Replicas, or if you're here in person, it's really easy to spot anything purple, and it's probably me. <laughs> uh, but I didn't follow the color convention this time because, as everybody knows, Batman only works in black. Sometimes a very, very pearl gold, apparently. But I was responsible for the two guns here. Uh, these are the first builds I've done in about four or so years. So very thankful to come back out of the dark ages here. It was something super fun. Um, got to experiment with a bunch of new techniques. The very first one here is the grapple gun. Uh, that's the really, really shiny small one. But what's really nice about it is it offers a unique challenge because there's only so many pieces in gold. Mm-hmm. It's very limited overall, so you really have to get creative with how you're going to do some of the internal work and stuff like that. In terms of just making it sturdy too, you can see all of the fancy angles. It's really ugly on the inside. Um, I try to open it up, but I probably can't even put it back together myself, but at least it survived the shipping out here. In terms of the details, it's mostly just using a lot of new styles of pieces. So there's a lot of really new modified tiles and modified slopes that really help kind of finish off the polished look. I tried to basically cover every exposed stud that I can. Um, But in terms of the grip, I think that was the toughest part, making it as sturdy as possible so you can kind of spin it around, hold it, run around. But other than that, no serious functionality just to keep it at least somewhat stable here. And then what's the next build here? The next one is the EMP rifle. So this is actually the biggest challenge I've had in a while because it's really, really heavy. Um, I know Batman's probably got some serious muscles from all of his workouts, but this thing's about five pounds on the inside. It's got most of the, uh, the Technic structure in there, so that was super fun. And then trying to incorporate all the functions with it as well, so I'll pick it up in a second. But the whole slide does work based off of the, I think it's a two or three second clip you see in the movie of this entire thing. You know, he spent millions of dollars on this tech and it only shows up in one scene, so I'm glad it happened. It gives me something to build from the from the movie, but so sad that it didn't get used as much as I would have liked. But super fun design here. Um, it's really, really sleek and really polished, and that's another thing I wanted to do here. It's really tough to see uh, against the, uh, the black-on-black tablecloth, but the design of it really has a lot of subtle angle and width changes to it, and just a lot of really nice curvature that I think was super fun to replicate. But I think the lighting on the inside was the most unique challenge because I had to house the battery box inside there. Um, it's actually been running since World of Lights yesterday, so this might be an advertisement for the uh, the coin batteries, the CRO 232s. They're super strong and they're still going strong apparently. So super grateful for that as well. But it was a nice little finishing touch to give it at least a little bit of a difference of color versus the all black there. Fantastic work. Thank you so much. Yeah, let me go ahead and pick it up and yeah, I'll show you some of the stuff sure. on the inside. So sturdy enough so that you can hold it kind of walk around and then it's only a little bit of movement but on the inside there you can see it does that little reloading action to recharge it with the batteries that are on the inside and it's a nice little touch to at least have and kind of walk around with a little bit but that's about it for these two in terms of functions uh, normally I kind of go for most of the aesthetic side of it and that's really the big catch here is to make them as accurate as possible because they're movie props at the end of the day for sure I think they turned out fantastic thank you cool thank you very much And what do we have up next, Nick? 
next we can talk with Simon about his uh, Bane mask from The Dark Knight Rises. Okay, here we go, Simon. Nobody cared about me building until I started building the mask for... Uh, the, oh, that's horrible. Um, so, uh, it's the main mask. Um, it is um, based off of Nick's kind of helmet designs. If you've seen him before, there's a lot of um, snot bricks that... You, it's hidden in here, but... Whoops. Um, but it was a fairly quick build. Like, I actually decided to rewatch the entire trilogy while doing this, and I was able to get it basically done through the time of doing it. Um, the fun part about it is it's, it's just fairly simple. It's using the technique that Nick kind of showed me back in the day to use the uh, mixo joints, and then it's actually just, well, I'm gonna stop doing it, because I think it kick up, and then, um, and it's just a simple loop. Um, and it is big enough to wear. Um, we, I think we're gonna wear it slightly later. But when we were trying to do this, we were trying to think about what are fun ways of displaying things. Like World of Lights in here is one of those really important parts and we figured well we have all these mannequins which look really good but during world of lights we had graffiti on here Ooh. so like we thought like joker came around and defaced all of <laughs> our um our, our our build so like the even like the joker head over here you can see he's got like the eyes over there and then you'll see on the last one um later on that it also has the black light and that was just one of those things where even after we built everything we're like how do we want to present this how do we just like kick it up a bit more and just make it even more fun so we have even like a joke within the joke so that during world of lights we have something like really fun to do yeah i think this looks fantastic especially the contrast of the sort of silver chrome elements with the black just really makes it stand out really nicely thank you thank you fantastic work next we can look at uh the prestige which is a favorite of daniel church here mm -hmm. so he built two uh, prestige builds. First one here is uh, the teleporting man. Uh, his uh, his final act, his final magic trick to show off that he could teleport from one place to another. And we will not reveal the secret here. We do not reveal the magician's secrets. <laughs> it's up to him to decide whether he wants to show that or not. But he added some fantastic lightning effects to make it look like a Tesla coil firing off and uh, teleporting this man to another place. Yeah, I love the way that lighting is strung up there. And then just kind of the, the wiring in general <laughs> looks great, too. Simon, are you being a good assistant there? I tried to, but no one told me how this works, so I'm guessing. Whoa! Whoa. What was that? <laughs> Where did he go? <laughs> He must have teleported somewhere else. I knew Simon was talented, but that's some like next level stuff right there. <laughs> He's a good assistant. And as well as uh, uh, from Daniel Church, we have uh, a materials crate where he transports all of the uh, all of his magic tricks. It's this giant pyramid-shaped wooden crate. It's part of some major scenes in the movie that I don't want to spoil. Um, but his whole experiment supposedly could fit inside that crate. Oh, look who came back. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> your, your assistants are wonderful here. Very talented. <laughs> we, we perform magic here at Orphan Lug. Next, we're coming up on my favorite film in the series, which is Inception. And one of the key props in that movie is this briefcase that contains a, dev a device that administers a compound to dreamers so that they could share dreams with each other. And later in the movie, it also administers a sedative so they can dream longer. And uh, if they were to die in their dreams, they would be in a limbo state. Not pleasant. Um, but this is one of my dream projects to build. It's about 18 pounds of Lego. The whole thing can uh, fold up and uh, turn into a case that you could carry by the carry handle. Unfortunately, it's a big mess with all of the IV cables coming out of it but I also added some lights to it so it can glow during World of Lights, but we also have lights on the countdown timers for how much time is left in that dream sequence and a light in the middle for the button, which you can press and start dreaming. <laughs> this is one of my favorite, this is my favorite movie of all time, so it, it really is a dream come true to have this build done, even though it's, uh, it gets not a ton of screen time, 
it gets enough that I'm attached to the movie, I want to make something from the movie. In addition to that, we have some of the totems for main characters in the movie that let the, uh, let the characters remember whether they're dreaming or not, have a grip on their reality. We have Ariadne's uh, chess piece, Eames' uh, a poker chip, um, Arthur's uh, loaded die, and then uh, Cobb's wife's uh, spinning top that never topples. Now this is fantastic. I especially love how you've done both kind of sides of the of the briefcase here, and so it's a complete kind of 360 experience looking at this here. Thank you. It's even when it's closed, it looks like a complete build. <laughs> I, I'm really happy with this one. All kinds of details, uh, all kinds of uh, research that went into it, like looking at uh, Comic Con 2011 photos of the props by themselves, the original props from the film really helped with being able to create this. So thank you to whoever went to Comic-Cons and passed <laughs> over a decade ago to help with this project. Perfect. And then what do we have up next? Next is uh, one of the most popular ones, Interstellar. Interstellar has some creations from Daniel Church and also Evan Bordessa, who has come back to the Lego hobby, thankfully. We've missed them dearly. Uh, Daniel Church has made TARS here. The uh, the sassy robot that uh, is a companion to some new NASA astronauts on their mission to uh, find a new Earth. Such an iconic character. Absolutely. Maybe we need to turn down the sarcasm a little <laughs> bit, right? <laughs> but he has a little bit of flexibility, as you can see in this uh, walking pose. Um, it also is made entirely with uh, official LEGO uh, drum lacquered silver parts. So those are not custom made. Those are actually what you can get in a kit. Uh, for example, like the the Aston Martin James Bond set, or uh, or like the Hubble telescope and the Spatial Discovery set. Those are actual silver pieces you can get yourself. And to its side, from Evan Bordessa, we have this watch that is a very important key part of the the story. You don't think so from the beginning. It's just a broken watch but it really is broken in a very specific way. And it's an important part of the story, so it, it was a cool prop to add to this. After Interstellar, we're gonna get to uh, a, little bit of, uh, a little bit of history. We got Dunkirk next, and we have uh, builds from Evan Johnson and, uh, and, uh, and Adrian Drake to show here. Awesome. So, hi, I'm Evan. Uh, I've built the uh, We Surround You um, f uh, pamphlet or flyer that was dropped onto Dunkirk. Um, so if uh, you might know, but if you don't know, um, uh, Dunkirk was uh, kind of a, I guess it was kind of a battle. It was more of a try and uh, attempt to escape. It's a place in France um, and the Germans ended up surrounding um, a whole bunch of allies in um, in France and they ended up dropping these flyers uh, down uh, upon them to warn them, I guess, that they surround you and trying to get them to surrender. Um, and so uh, they, uh, well, the story goes that they ended up escaping via a lot of civilian vessels and all sorts of other things. But um, I guess about my, my build, I guess, uh, I, uh, it, it's really hard to take something that's on paper and right. translate it into a, uh, some type of build that's inherently like more three-dimensional. And so uh, I think I, I I am pretty uh, proud of how it uh, turned out um, using kind of a almost mosaic-y kind of uh, style, um, but yeah. And then obviously we have the helmet here by Adrian, um, just an iconic, uh, just like piece of, you know, a wearable thing that is recognizable for any type of uh, um, battle, I guess. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's fantastic work there. Like you said, not always easy to translate what's on paper to Lego, but I really like how you did kind of the lettering there. Looks fantastic. And then this helmet, yeah, very iconic from the battle. So thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, I guess we'll move on to uh, back to Nick for one of the next films. Yeah. So yeah. perfect. Here we go. Next, we have Tenet, and we have another flex of our collections of silver pieces. <laughs> um, from Marcus Robular, we have the algorithm, which is a physical form of an algorithm that is supposedly supposed to tie the forward in time, backward in time in 
the movie. Honestly, I didn't really understand Tenet fully. <laughs> same, same. <laughs> it's a difficult one, but but after some research, it, that's pretty much what it is. And he did a fantastic job making this physical component of it become. It's a part of a staff that feels like a uh, the physical manifestation of a uh, of an algorithm that will solve their issues. We love uh, flexing our silver pieces. <laughs> all, these are all official LEGO silver yeah. pieces as well. Yeah, it's amazing the pieces that are available out there. So does that bring us to the final one here? Finally, we are at Oppenheimer, another historical film from Christopher Nolan and his latest release as of this interview. So from this, we have Casey McCoy's build of a scene early on in the film where I uh, a, an apple is poisoned with cyanide so and is given to a, a professor and this is the apple of course and we got a cyanide bottle with an eyedropper on top here and another thing that he built is the syringe that is used to inject the cyanide one of the cool piece uses on this build is this silver part this metal part is an official lego part that's actually an axle for train wheels Ooh. <laughs> so that's how we're able to get something so thin and maybe makes anybody afraid of needles, maybe squirm a little bit, but it's like it's a really effective design. Uh, it feels real. Yeah. I mean, all of these builds are just spectacular here. So what was the public reaction like here during Brickworld as people would come up and start seeing these different movies represented? They would notice maybe one of their favorites from Christopher Nolan and then realize, oh, wait, that's every one of his films wow that's so cool uh they'll they'll see like the dark knight and then you know, realize it's christopher nolan like, oh there's inception there's uh interstellar he's such a great storyteller and writer um i think this is a worthwhile tribute to his works and i can't wait to see what he creates next and maybe it'll inspire future builds from us in orphan lug <laughs>